Now, what does an overshadowed player even mean? These are your B tier players that oftentimes are pretty important in their game of Big Brother, but at the end of the day, they were overshadowed by the likes of more notable or dominant players on their season and therefore didn't have the respect from the other players, or the viewers, or both. Just as an example to get you started with the idea, one player that I feel falls into this role is Liz Nolan from Big Brother 17. When you enter the final three being one of the main twists of the season, being in the most dominating showmance of the season, winning three HOHs and a veto along the way, but yet you are still somehow the short straw compared to the other two players in the final three, maybe even starting from the final five, then that's what I mean by being an overshadowed player. And then to go a step further, imagine being Julia. So hopefully that gives you a solid taste of what I mean by an overshadowed player. It's not necessarily a list of underrated players, but more so a list of players that never really got the respect they deserved both in and out of the game due to being surrounded by more visible players. That I betrayed you and that you would never vote for me. And I, I would hope that you would respect me as a player and that was just a, that it's just a strategic move. I really do. My first overshadowed player is actually one of the first. It's Nicole from Big Brother 2. She started out being the most likely first boot with no opportunity to save herself with a veto and was sitting next to the most well-liked person in the house, yet she managed to round up enough players and strategically save herself, where she then dominated from there on out, basically all the way up until the end of the game. She dominated so much of the game, but was very overshadowed at the end of the day. Her partner in Hardy was obviously much more out in front as he was the big guy who kept winning all the HOHs. She seemingly was never respected by most of the people that were voted out of the house. And when you're sitting next to Dr. Will at the end of the game, who was a much more fun TV character, and someone you wanted to root for, you're not going to get the respect that you've worked for. On a grander scale of things too, Dr. Will has become one of the greatest players of all time. So for Nicole to be sitting next to him at the end and losing pretty convincingly, history will oftentimes rewrite itself against your favor. But I know how you roll, baby. You got, a, you got some things you need to work on and you're gonna do fine with them, but you're gonna have to deal with this one for a very long time. And I'm not being mean and I'm not being negative, but I'm just telling you, that's just how it goes. Baby, it's on when we out of here. When we come back to vote, hey, that's it. When we come back to vote, it's on. So be cool, babe. Take a light. Bye, Mark. Okay. She's not treading me. What was that? Next up on my list, when you think of the All-Stars Final Four, this is what you think. You think of Dr. Will playing one of the best games of all time, almost coming away as the winner before Janelle smartened up and evicted him at the Final Four. You think of Boogie playing a very strong game and coming out with a victory to give Chilton a 2-0 record when it came to winning the game. And you think of Janelle's absolute dominating performance in the competitions. And then, well, then you might think of Erica just being there as the obvious number four. But Erica actually did a lot during All-Stars. She was the one who convinced Janelle to take a shot at Will at the Final Four, saving herself when it looked like she was for sure going to be evicted. And once that happened, she guaranteed her spot in the Final Two, which is good gameplay. Socially, she was very good. Her relationship with Boogie helped her narrowly survive eviction against Howie. She won a few competitions when she needed to in order to maneuver her way throughout the early endgame. And I personally feel that she played a really strong game. But given the status of the other three players at the Final Four, she was incredible incredibly overshadowed and in my opinion may be the most overshadowed player in all of Big Brother. You were? I don't know, I just, it so happened so fast. Erica is under the impression that if we can get to the final three that I will take her to the finals. That ain't happening. Marcellus has voted for Erica to win Big Brother all Stars. <laughs> Howie's vote goes to Mike to be crowned the winner. I used to say Zach from Big Brother 8, but I feel that he's gotten a bit more attention recently and pretty clearly would have destroyed either Donato in the final two, so he's only kinda on this list. Zach wasn't a great player, but getting in with the Donatos as they were just starting their domination in the game was crucial for his success in the game. His performative anti-Donato acting at the final four to gain respect for the jurors was actually very smart, and winning part one of that final HOH, which I believe to be the most brutal part one of all time, signified that Zach was indeed a game player and he was there to win. Nobody had the stones to truly try and muscle you guys out. Well, I'm the muscle, and I'm going to try and muscle you out. Okay, you do it, brother. Dick is losing it. Go on, wow. Zach. Wow. Yes, he did. What the f he did. Good for Zach. Yes, I'm sorry. Round of applause. And 
Zach is the winner. Congratulations, Zach. You have won the power veto. You have just a few minutes to decide. So this next one is kind of crazy, but I've got Memphis from Big Brother 10. He's kind of in an interesting spot, though. Even before All-Stars 2, people talked about how the Renegades were one of the best duos in the show's history, but when people say that, they really just mean Dan. But without Memphis's performance, Dan does not win. If Memphis doesn't win the veto during either of Dan's first two HOH reigns, then the outcome Dan was hoping for in both weeks might not have happened. The most important thing, though, is Memphis winning the veto at the Final Five of Big Brother 10. If Memphis is not able to pull out the veto win at the Final Five and save Dan, Dan more than likely gets evicted there, so Memphis saved the Renegades multiple times, which allowed them both to make to the final two. Although Dan was certainly the more impressive player, without Memphis's role in performance in season 10, the Renegades do not make it to the final two. I was playing to be an asset to your game. So when you got the power, you didn't want to send me home because you thought I could help you in the long run. You didn't win nothing. This next one is another severely under-talked about player, and that's Reagan in Big Brother 12. Not only did he correctly sniff out the brigade in their entire plan of action, Reagan saved himself by winning the veto the first two times he was on the block, and then came in second the other time he was nominated. Which, might I add, I think there's a very strong chance that Reagan wins the game had he beaten Enzo in that competition. And I think he has a good argument to win the game in the end as long as he's not next to Brittany. Unfortunately for Reagan, whenever people talk about Big Brother 12, they think of the brigade, Brendan and Reagan. Rachel and Brittany, so I think it's fair to say that Reagan has been extremely overshadowed due to those that surrounded him, which is a shame considering that he was so close to winning the entire game. It's very bittersweet to take myself off the block only to see him go up because he's playing for his wife Stacy, who has a very rare bone disease. Poor Reagan, uh, my little guy. I do feel bad for him. So next, I've got a lady from Big Brother 13, and honestly, we could say any of Shelly, Kalia, or Portia, but I'm gonna go with Portia, because she made it the furthest out of the bunch. I just never hear people talk about Portia, because BB13 isn't talked about very much, and when people do talk about it, they talk about how Shelly and Kalia were robbed, but very rarely do I hear people talk about Portia in that regard. She played a really strong game in the beginning, latching onto the veterans, becoming close with Rachel Riley, and then gaining her golden key in week one. Then around the jury phase, she started working with the other side and Danielle Donato and Kalia. But once she was HOH at the final six and opened Pandora's box, allowing both Rachel and Jordan to stay in the game, Portia was able to reintegrate herself with Rachel and then was able to win a couple of clutch competitions, which helped her survive and be taken to the final two, where she only lost by one vote. She was very close to winning Big Brother 13 and, in my opinion, has been quite overshadowed in a season that itself is already overshadowed. I'm so annoyed. Rachel and I were really close in the house, but Rachel kind of started losing it. She was making the entire house feel uncomfortable, so I really had to distance myself from her. I like Portia, and now that she's not attached to Rachel's hip, I really like Portia. I don't really like saying this one, but Danielle Murphy from Big Brother 14 is kind of overshadowed. She beats Dan in the final two, it's possible she beats Ian, and it's even possible that she beats Shane. I don't know how likely it is that she beats either Ian or Shane, but it's certainly possible. However, because she was in the final three with Dan Giesling and Ian Terry, she was always going to be seen as the number three to viewers. Danielle played a somewhat strong game though, all things considered, and was the only woman to win an HOH in season 14. She wasn't extraordinary, but given the extreme top heaviness of the BB14 cast, Danielle was always destined to be an overshadowed player. What are you gonna do? What do you want me to do? Make your own decision. Shut up, Dan. He wants in and out so bad. He does. Yeah. yeah. I mean, whatever whatever you you need to do, if you need to, to take him off and put me up, as long as he guarantees me. I got you. I got you. Now, like I mentioned earlier, we have Liz Nolan from Big Brother 17. Liz Nolan is one of the most overshadowed players in all of Big Brother, which is actually kind of crazy. From being the focal point in the most dominant trio during Big Brother 17, winning many competitions, and being the main figure for the twin twist, Liz was completely overshadowed from the final five onwards and likely loses to everyone at that point. Liz was by no means a bad player, and many still think that she should have beaten Steve in the end, but in a season with the strategic and physical dominance of Vanessa and Steve, the diary room star Johnny Mac and the hulking figure of Austin, being an all-around solid player just wasn't going to cut it, and Liz somehow failed to stand out during the final stages of the game, making her an overshadowed player. Wait a second, Vanessa. 
I can't believe she's asking us to follow through on all these things. And I am just shaking my head in agreement to stay this week, but I have no intention of following through on those conditions. No way. Up next, we got another kind of weird one, and it's James Hewling from Big Brother 18. It doesn't happen very often where the male in a showman is deemed the less threatening, but James somehow fell into the shadows during the entirety of Big Brother 18. Maybe it's because he played much more boring and seemingly didn't do anything throughout the season, especially compared to the first time playing in Big Brother 17, but he didn't play poorly. He was almost never nominated, and he hid behind bigger targets in order to progress his game. But for being a returning player and making it all the way to the final three, it's astonishing that when I think of Big Brother 18 as a whole, James is like the 10th person I think of. So I feel that in general, he was quite the overshadowed player, but somewhat deservingly so due to his strategy and the fact that he did seemingly very little throughout the game. I'm on this little platform and hanging on to this curtain cord. I got milk and kitty litter all over my shoes. This is not easy. Meow. Meow. Next is one that I really don't know where I stand. I'm not gonna like saying it, but I have Christmas from Big Brother 19 and Big Brother 22. Christmas has shown to be a decently solid social player, at the very least adequate in competitions, and a really, really great ally to have inside the house, yet somehow has zero, zero win equity to her name. She's someone who made very deep runs in both of her seasons, but due to the lack of respect she has by both the audience and the other house guests, she almost certainly loses to anyone else making a deep run at the game. For being a solid B-tier player, Christmas is overshadowed by everyone else on her seasons when it comes to being an actual player. And I mean, come on. Even though I think that Josh is the greatest player of all time, I can't deny that the dude is a huge meatball. And the fact that he would destroy Christmas in a final two vote is absolutely absurd and proves that although Christmas is by no means a bad player, her personality and overall character makes anything she does in the game pretty much pointless as she would never garner the respect of a jury in order to take the win. So I think I can kind of put her in the overshadowed list of players because of it. Are you okay, Christmas? It's super awkward in the kitchen right now. Ugh. Next, we got a kind of recent player. It's Holly Allen from Big Brother 21. Throughout the first five to seven weeks of the season, I thought Holly was in the best position to win and would beat most other players in a final two vote. She was positioned so nicely in the house, was able to make some moves and decisions within her alliance that bettered her game without putting a big target on her back, and being paired with someone who could win every type of competition set her up so nicely for the end game. So what happened? Well, that last point I made is what happened. Being paired with Jackson, who went on one of the craziest comp streaks of all time, made it so that Holly was viewed as someone who Jackson just carried to the end. She went from being looked at as a well-positioned player to someone who was dragged along through really no fault of her own, because what was the alternative? She wasn't going to go behind Jackson's back and try to gun for him because he was her number one, a shield for her, and was the biggest power player in the game that was on her side. And even if she wanted to, she never would have the opportunity to do so because he was always safe. Holly went from being an early favorite to win to being someone that couldn't beat anyone left starting at the final six. So even though I think Holly played a really good game, after Jackson started winning everything and the fans started rooting for the Cliff and Nicole underdog story, there was little room left in anyone's mind to talk about little old Beth. We're not calling you Holly this summer. No! Oh no, what do they call me? Beth. No! Dang it, David! David! Oh, who is this? I want to be on the challenge. I'm going to do it. I ew, want ew. to do <laughs> And lastly, we have Alyssa from Big Brother 23. Although having a somewhat quiet pre-jury phase, Alyssa entered the jury phase as a pretty big target of the cookout, with basically everyone somewhat targeting her except for Xavier. However, Alyssa managed to stay week after week somewhat under the radar, which is crazy. In week 6, she won the veto while on the block, which likely saved her that week. Then in week 7, she instantly won the high rollers room comp to keep herself safe for the week. Then she was able to slip by during week 8 as Sarah Beth was seen as a bigger threat. Then in week 9, she was looking destined to go home until she pulled out another veto win, which forced Tiffany to nominate Claire, leaving Alyssa as the last non-cookout member standing in the season. 
The reason that Alyssa is so overshadowed, though, is because pre-jury, Christian was seen as the bigger threat in front of Alyssa. Then during the jury phase, the story was basically how long could Claire and Derek X survive against the cookout. So every time Alyssa won something and kept herself safe, it was like the side story of what was really going on. And lastly, her eviction was over quick as it was a double eviction, and even that was overshadowed because her leaving meant that the cookout had completed their mission and were the last six standing. So every aspect of Alyssa's game was just simply overshadowed by everything else going on around her, and there was nothing she could do about it. Can I ask that? Let me start with this. I know you and Christian are super close, and showmancing it up. What? Damn! And those are the players that I feel fall into the category of being overshadowed players. They're definitely fine players, typically B tier or maybe even higher, but due to the trajectory of the season and other more prominent players, they're left behind in the shadows in favor of their competition. Thank you so much for watching. I'd like to give an extra thank you to my YouTube members for joining and supporting me just a little bit extra. It may not seem like much, but you really do make a difference. If you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing or maybe even joining as a YouTube member yourself. And as always, here's a clip for you on your way out. I'm not gonna battle James. I know he got it. I'm not putting you on. Right behind you. Okay, I'm done. Do it. Frank, you are evicted from the Big Brother house.